Dios, Mandy. Um, did you meant to reply, muy bien, gracias, Senor Ambrose. Well, I'm not feeling very muy bien, Senor Ambrose, but gracias all the same. Oh dear. Monday morning blues, eh? Whatever happened to your fun-filled weekend? I do not have Monday morning blues, sir, and my weekend was only fun-filled up to a point. Well, and which point was that? The point where I met my old friend Rosie. You remember Rosie, don't you, sir? Oh, yes. Wasn't she a rather attractive... Oh, uh, yes. She worked for Theo over at that little branch in Greenwich. Oh, dear. Poor old Theo. How is he? Still grappling with the complexities of the Junior Savers Club, isn't he? Not quite. Oh, has he been given the... No. Theo's been promoted to run the new Docklands branch. And Rosie's going with him as principal secretary. Should have seen her face as she told me. It was all I could do not to... Theo! Where's Pickham? she asked, as she swanned off, leaving me in a wake of crumbs from a mushroom volleyball. Theo! How did he do it? The man's barely competent. I'll tell you how. He got married. Sir? The young lady's name is Caroline, graduate of a Swiss finishing school. Devastatingly attractive, witty, father has more connections than British Telecom. <laughs> and she do things with a lobster that would put Parisian chefs to shame. <laughs> <laughs> they started pulling in big clients at their social soirees. Top brass got wind of it, and Robert's your father's brother. Huh? Well, do try and keep up, sir. Oh, yes, the old boy network, eh? Yes, well, by all accounts, Caroline is neither old nor a boy. These days, unless you're prepared to play the corporate game, opportunities just don't come along. And that means marriage and socialising. When was the last time you even had as much as a pint with Parkinson? Parkinson? <laughs> just a manager's assistant. Well, you've got to start somewhere. And as marriage seems out of the question, though, of course, a marriage of convenience, <laughs> a partnership. Well, if I could find someone suitable. Yes. <laughs> well, I might consider it. But as there's no one, looks like I'm stuck here for the present. <laughs> you see, we'll never get on with that attitude. What do you mean? My attitude's very positive. We're learning Spanish, gaining to Europe and all of that. Yes, well, unless things start to improve soon, you'll be going alone. It'll be adios, amigo. <laughs> Rochelle Jackson requests the pleasure of your company at the opening of Ebony Elite, the new nightclub for black achievers. I like it. Only wealthy, dynamic and stylish candidates will be selected to apply. <laughs> Only the wealthy, stylish and the dynamic have been selected. <laughs> Ebony Elite. I expect my invites in the post. Nobody could open a club like this without inviting Desmond Ambrose. Especially since they've invited you. <laughs> I am dynamic. And stylish. All I need is to meet a rich widow at this club, and then I can start to work on the wealthy bit. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that Desmond's Barbershop had become the regular home for Peckham's cogn... cogn... Oh, what is it, Matt? Cognoscenti. The in crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cog... Cognac Plenty. The in crowd. <laughs> We've only been asked to join a very selective new club. Huh. If it is what I think it is, it's so selective, everybody I've spoken to this morning has been selected. Except you, Desmond. <laughs> Go along, get a few complimentaries in, know what I mean? It's all right, Des, we'll fill you in on what you missed. <laughs> Hi, Lee, Matthew. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, yeah. oh, Daisy. Daisy is spending another week with us. Yeah, she was most positively excellent, Phil, last time, dude. Uh, she was really filled to bits last time. Are <laughs> you, you and Daisy duty today? Yeah, short straw. Hey, Matt, hmm? returning your tone on the history of the Gambia. Most engrossing. Well, thank you, Daisy. You, um, uh, you didn't find it too controversial. Negativo. But let's knock heads on some of the points I've marked. Well, uh... <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you meet your match, eh? Who would have thought there were so much brains in such a small head? <laughs> Never mind all that intellectual stuff, Daisy. 
You want to take a few lessons from the University of Life. Here, Claude. What do you reckon to that, then? We are the cogna... Cogna... Cognoscenti. Cognoscenti? Where do you know a word like that? Have you been OD'ing on the alphabet spaghetti? No. <laughs> <laughs> I new words. I learn five a week. And what's your words this week, Daisy? Yes, it would be interesting to see if we understand them. After all, it's never too late to learn, eh, pork pie? <laughs> <laughs> I'm up to the Ds. Who can spell daguerreotype? Oh, D. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I never got past A, B, C. It's easy as well. Actually, it's an early form of photography. We'd oh. better give them something simpler, Daisy. OK. Debonair? Oh, I know that one. D-E-B-O-N-A-I-R. Suave and sophisticated. <laughs> Very good, sir. Yeah. He only knows that because he used to have debonair Jazzy D on the side of his trumpet case. Oh, you remembered, my sweet. We'd better depart or she'll get detention. Detention? Our Gloria learned a lot about that when she was at school. <laughs> there you go, boys. Thank, Thank you, you Shirley. Desmond? Oh, um, dearest. Yeah. Did anything come in the post me this morning? Yes. Some bills. <laughs> <laughs> now, speaking of which, did you see that money I left out for the milk and newspaper? No, I don't even get to read the newspapers these days. <laughs> oh, well, listen, sit down. I'll be with you in a minute. Are you sure nothing came in the mail? Oh, yes. I received an invitation to a new club. Oh, that's great, Shell. You can come along with us. We're going to have a bit of a bop. <laughs> you speak to my wife like that and I'll give you a bit of a bop. <laughs> Don't worry, Desmond. It's not something that I would be interested in. Uh, do you know anyone that might be? Yes, it would be a shame to waste it. I'll give it to Michael. <laughs> Did I have some wine in here? Oh, Gloria had some friends round the other night. Your father said she could drink it. It was either that or his beer. It was a simple choice to make. <laughs> no, no, it was a superior bottle of Rioja. Well, Gloria and friends had a superior time drinking it. <laughs> That's one of your father's beers. No, it's all right. Since I've educated my palate, beer seems a little rough on the taste buds. Well, my palate needs some secondary education. Move your foot. <laughs> You haven't been invited to Ebony Elite as well, have you, Father? Oh, did you get one? Yes. So did I. Your father didn't, and he's in one of his moods about it. I'm not <laughs> sure. They probably want to fill up the place with attractive women so that long lizards like Michael could prey on them. Mm. Perhaps I will go then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see? What they do is, Father, they simply select the most prominent people from the community. You obviously didn't make the grade. <laughs> now, the point of this place is to meet people, my kind of people. Movers, shakers, high rollers. Old age pensioners and African <laughs> students. <laughs> Watch out, Daisy. Don't go too near, Mike. We might not have eaten yet. Shut up. <laughs> You're late tonight. I told you, detention. I went to the library to get some more books. Daisy, it's really good that you're so keen on learning, but you must have some fun, too. Make friends. Enjoy yourself. Yeah, I have lots of fun. Lots of friends. She's right, you know. When I dropped her off this morning, she was surrounded by a mob of kids who wanted to be her mate. And the same tonight. Yeah. Why join a club to make friends, Michael? Take a lesson from Desi. Just be yourself. Natural, charming and witty. <laughs> On second thoughts, join a club. <laughs> Good evening, sir, and welcome to Ebony Elite. Good evening. I'm Rochelle Jackson, the co-owner, and uh, you look like a man I've got to get to know. Michael Ambrose, banker. Uh, would you care for a drink? 
Cheers. Welcome. Busy. Good turnout. First nights are always like this. It's the people with staying power we're after. Do you have staying power, Michael? <laughs> uh, yes, I think so. <laughs> Excuse me. Got a bit of a thirst on. Came straight from the squash club. Ooh, play hard too, huh? I've just got to find out every little thing about you. Every little thing? <laughs> oh, boy! Boy! Good night, gentlemen. Welcome to Admiral Lake. All right, babes. Thanks. Come on. Listen, we get a few in, then we check out the talent. You can't see anyone. It's so dark in here. You may find it an advantage, Paul Clyde. Remember, they can't see you either. <laughs> Come on, I'll get your carrot juice. <laughs> so, Michael, banking is just the tip of the Ambrose iceberg, huh? Yes, I, I've diversified into areas where I'm short of constant growth. <laughs> Smart cookie. You get a lot of close shaves in that business. <laughs> well, you, you could say that. Care to go once around the floor? Rochelle, I'm an Ambrose, and we never do anything once. Yep. This is the life the Pickle Prince was made for, boys. I got cocktails and water wall women. <laughs> These cocktails are delicious. They have obviously used the best African fruits. Now, Mahan, this is the best West Indian rum doing what it's doing. <laughs> well, Augustus, what do you reckon to the decor then, eh? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes, it's quite naff, Math, wouldn't you say? <laughs> what, what? <laughs> I think you've had enough. You're talking funny. You <laughs> 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 cracked it. Let's hit the dance floor. Yeah, man. Excuse me, sir, your bill. Huh? I'm these three. I'm a poor student. And I'm a struggling pensioner. <laughs> Bung in on the slate, my good man. <laughs> Some invitations got sent to some absolute no-nos by Mr. Oh, yeah. It's obviously important to keep up certain standards in a place like this. Oh, it is. I mean, you can't just let any of them riffraff in, can you? Well, no. Welcome to Ebony Elite. <laughs> As you've met my son. Charles. <laughs> Buenos dias, indeed, Mandy. How was your evening, sir? Truly wonderful, Mandy. <laughs> Don't tell me you met someone who owns a garden centre. No, Mandy. Last night, I met a woman. <laughs> yes, it can be a bit daunting the first time. Rochelle Jackson, a princess, a goddess, and an heiress. Oh, is that all? She was like a female version of me. Smart, ambitious, go-getting. Scheming, manipulative. You're right, man. One can't spend one's life on the benches in the B team. You've got to get out there and play hardball. Strange. All this time I thought I was working for Michael Ambrose, I was actually working for John Barnes. <laughs> Are we still on for our Spanish session this evening, sir? Uh, not tonight, Mandy. I'm seeing Rochelle. Oh, so much for me learning my new phrase, then. Oh, tell it to me now, then. 
Are you sure? Oh, come on, man. We haven't got all day. Mi siento como un matador herido por las cuernas de un toro cuando mi amor rechazado. Very impressive. <laughs> what does it mean? I cry like a wounded matador tossed on the cruel horns of unrequited love. It's not going to get you very far on a high street bank in Madrid now, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Will there be anything else, sir? Yes, a cup of decaf and slip and a treat. Yeah. Yes, well, as you're the go-getter, sir, I suggest you go get it yourself. <laughs> so, when I cottoned on to what Michael was doing, I decided to give him a bit of help. <laughs> Desmond Ambrose. Oh, you could be so wicked. By the end of the evening, Rochelle Jackson thought Michael's surname was Getty. I loved him discussing the size of the Ambrose diamonds. <laughs> I'm glad I gave you that invitation. <laughs> you were like the only dog in the street without a bone. Uh, thank you, my little sugar club. But I don't think every elite is our kind of place. Why is that? Well, it's full of people who miss when they kiss. <laughs> <laughs> Desmond, what happened to yesterday's tips? Well, it's in the tin, darling. There you go, Mum. Oh, thank you. Um, I'll take Daisy to school today. Oh, it's no trouble, Mum. Yeah, it's no trouble. And, and Gloria's doing a great job. All the same, I'll do Daisy duty today. <laughs> oh, there's your tea and toast. <laughs> <laughs> I expect you need refreshing after your night on the town. Come along, Daisy. Well, well, well. If it isn't the Pegum Cogno, what's it? <laughs> I suppose you come to brag after last night. Yeah, well, we did say we'd fill you in, didn't we? Ah. Uh -huh. And I have to say, it was unbelievable. Yes, truly unbelievable. They only want us to join, didn't they, Math? Oh, yes. Uh, they were most insistent at one point. <laughs> oh, you should have been there, Des. We was treated like kings. <laughs> I was almost crowned. <laughs> I saw stars the whole night. I can't be done with that paparazzi, though. No, that garlic gives me wind. <laughs> I stopped to the caviar and the smoked salmon. Um, were there any young ladies? <laughs> young ladies, Des? Oh, the talent was dynamite. <laughs> oh. And when we hit that dance floor... Oh, don't tell me it went off! <laughs> I, I was there! <laughs> and I left through the front door! <laughs> I've only known you a few hours yet. I've always known that when the right man came along, a few hours is all it would take. Hours? I knew after only a few minutes. Minutes, hours. I had a gut feeling after seconds. Did I say minutes? <laughs> I knew instantly. So impulsive. Are you this way in all your business dealings? Well, I uh, try to keep a cool head. Victor, more champagne. Tell me more about your family, Michael. Your father was fascinating. Well, let's not talk about him. Tell me more about your background. Well, Dad was in oil. He got bored and moved into gold and racehorses. Anybody in your family into horses, Michael? Uh, yes, I have an, an eccentric uncle who takes a keen interest. Does he have stables? No, he lives in a council flat. <laughs> I said he lives in council flats. There's a little man in town in the northern provinces of Australia. He has a stud farm there. Oh, maybe we could do business. I mean, this club thing is just a little hobby of mine. Do you have any little hobbies, Michael? Yeah. <laughs> no need to speak Spanish, actually. <laughs> <laughs> The only language people like us need to know is the language of the almighty dollar. Whatever country you're in, it speaks loud and clear. I think we'd make a great team, Michael. And I just don't mean in business. Would we? Would we? Yeah, we would. But, um, I've never been one for whirlwind romances. Whirlwind? Honey, Hurricane Rochelle has got you in her eye. And there's no escape in this baby. Daisy, there's something we want to talk to you about. 
Beam me up, Scotty. Hi, everyone. Oh, I'm just in time for an Ambrose family conference. Oh, dear. Who's for the high jump? Dad? <laughs> Gloria? For who, then? Daisy. Well, that figures. You've been spending too much time with Gloria. <laughs> Have I done something wrong? Yes, Daisy. It's about all the newspaper money and the tips that you've been taking. What? What? I didn't steal it. I suppose it leapt into your pocket as you were passing. No, <laughs> I borrowed it. Look, the kids at school didn't like me. They said I was too smart by half. But I remembered from the home that when you've got things that other people want, they become your friends. So you gave them money? And sweets. It's all here, Mother. How much she took, who she gave it to, and when. Fine friends. No wonder they were all around you in a playground. I mean, I'm going to pay it back. I've even worked out the interest you'll all get. 11.5% APR over a fixed six-month period. <laughs> that seemed a little generous. Now, I would suggest... Daisy, <laughs> what kind of friends do you think you can buy? Not very good ones. They vanish faster than your money. Be yourself, Daisy. Uh, making real friends takes time, not money. Isn't that right, Michael? Mm? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, they used to call Michael clever clogs at school as well. Mother. <laughs> he never had to buy his friends. And believe me, if Michael doesn't have to, no one does. <laughs> Just always tell the truth about yourself, Daisy. You see, there's no point in pretending to be something else. You always get found out in the end. You'd agree with that, won't you, Michael? <laughs> I'm sorry. I won't do it again, I promise. Then we'll say no more about it. Well, you can pay the money back by sweeping the shop. And making the tea. And doing the dishes. Join a youth club, Daisy. That's one way out of make mates. That's an excellent idea. Even Desmond's got his Domino's club. And Michael's got a whole club full of his kind of people. High rolling, moving and shaking, hard hitting, self starting, go getters. <laughs> I've decided not to take up the option of the Ebony Elite membership. Uh, what? Too expensive for you, Michael? <laughs> well, let's just say that there's a price that even I'm not prepared to pay. Mm. I'm going back to my Spanish lessons with Mandy. Can I come? I can speak Spanish. And what can you say in Spanish, Daisy? All you'll ever need to know. What? Uh, buenos dias, senor. No, silly. <laughs> Hasta la vista, baby. <laughs>
<laughs> you see, the trouble with teenage daughters and telephones is, hmm? it starts off with a ring, and before you know it, they're permanently engaged. <laughs> they're making it up. I never made them any calls. And the chicken never crossed the road. <laughs> OK, well, that one's shown for start. What about all the other nationwide calls? They work. Oh, so you have been job hunting. <laughs> yeah, well, sort of. Anyway, I must go, because I've got to be at the studio for 11. You mean you're going to meet Alex again? It's been over a month and we still haven't met him? Oh, it's only been about three weeks, two days, eight hours. <laughs> anyway, we're just getting to know each other. You'll meet him when the time is right. Wait, what's wrong with him? Listen, he'll go mad if I'm late. I've got to sweat the transport and stuff today. Oh, are you planning to go away somewhere? It's for Alex's artwork. He's planning an art exhibition and I'm helping him. It'll look good on my CV. But, Gloria, you forget. Once you're finished learning, it's time to start earning. That's right. And as far as I know, your friend Alex is not paying you a wage. And I'm paying his phone bill. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, yeah. <clears throat> I see ya. Louise has been trying to get hold of your Aldi. She wants you to call round. Well, maybe Louise should change her name to... 369 pounds! <laughs> you know what your problem is? Yes, what? Alex Reynolds. You'll never be satisfied with any young man that Gloria brings home here. That's right, because I know what's right. I know all about these artists, Shirley. Living in squalor, drunk every day, keeping decent people's daughters out all night, running up decent people's telephone bills, buying illegal substances. If that's what you want for your daughter, fine. What's wrong with you? Sometimes the tension in here, Des, it gets a bit much, you know? Hello, it's me. Hi. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a bone to pick with you. Ah, oh, vegetarians don't pick bones. I'm not a vegetarian, and I want to know why you said I was to Deborah and her husband thingy last night. So that Deborah and her husband thingy only had to cook one meal. So I starved to death. Listen, you don't own me, you know. And who gives you the right to make decisions without even asking me first? Oh, you see? Now, Deborah would say that aggression is due to the amount of meat you eat. Yeah, well, smell this. <laughs> That's what I like about you, Gloria. Hmm, good. I do like them too, though, you know. Maybe we should invite them over here sometime. Oh, so you want to play Mr and Mrs, do you? Maybe. <laughs> then we'll have to do all the other things that married couples do. Oh, yeah, we just had a row, haven't we? So let's make up, then. <laughs> Daddy wouldn't approve. Why not? I'm decent. Honest, legal, and I'm a dab hand at DIY. Mm, so I see. <laughs> oh! Here's some new stuff. Nice. Right, thank you kindly, man. <laughs> Tea, with or without the tanning? Uh, with, please. Oh, about your art exhibition, I phoned everywhere. I even rang your good friend Catherine in Glasgow. Oh, and what did she say? Yeah, she jumped at the chance, like you said. I'd love to have Alex Reynolds for a few days. Mm. That's Catherine. Mm. Everyone else was booked up. I did have this really brilliant idea, though. Hmm. But I did think it was a bit cheeky, considering I've never really met the guy. I'm listening. See, I've recreated garages. I've done empty railway carriages. I've even done greenhouses. But I've never, ever done a barbershop. <laughs> My dad's barbershop. Yeah, it mm -hmm. came to me the other day when you was telling me about those guys, Matthew and Paul Pie. Yeah. How they just sit around all day telling stories and listening to music. Yeah. And your dad <laughs> playing special requests on his trumpet for the customers. No, I don't think that's a very good idea. No, 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 it feels right. <laughs> no, all right, then. <laughs> and from what you told me about your dad, I'm sure he'd relish the idea of playing host to an art exhibition. Him being a fellow artist, he could play during the show. <laughs> Does your mum still dance? Yeah. She'll be there dancing on my grave when she finds out about this. <laughs> so you will ask them for me? Please? Pretty, please? Oh, you're not that pretty, you know. No. But I am... sexy. <laughs> <laughs> Get right back down there now, Alex. <laughs> can it possibly do, beside burn a small hole in your pocket? We need new chairs. These chairs and I have a few years left in us yet. Yes, you'll be lucky if it lasts another week. Tony, you see this chair? 
I shaved my first customer in this chair. You mean those marks are blood stains? <laughs> People have no respect for the past. No, no, that's not true. Nostalgia's big business, Des. People pay a fortune for this sort of stuff nowadays. Right, so if we sell them, we can buy a new set. Lee, how much do you think they're worth? Oh, about 250. <laughs> 250? There you are, Des. 250 pounds? No, no. Two pound fifty, Des. <laughs> Speaking on behalf of the regulars, may I suggest that the management also do something about the customer seating arrangements? Yeah, man. The seats have had it. The springs have sprung and the stuffings left long ago. Maybe the two of you should follow it. <laughs> Why not get something more elegant, Shirley? A leather Chesterfield would be nice. Mm -hmm. So for a fortnight in Florida. What I'd like is one of those armchairs with two receptacles. <laughs> one for my bottle of rum and one for a mini television set so I can watch the races. Now, listen, I've seen this great recliner desk with built-in stereo and massage pads for your back. Oh, yeah. Oh, I could do with some of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sounds great, Lee. Either way, Des, these chairs have got to go. A client of mine caught her sleeve on this the other day. Yeah, she could have sued us, Desmond. Mm. You must admit, Desmond, having a haircut here is hazardous enough without the added risk of being impaired while I'm waiting for a blow drive. <laughs> right. I'll put up a notice. Pass me that pen, Tony. Customers are advised that they are seated at their own <laughs> risk. <laughs> <Sit down. laughs> the management cannot be held responsible for injuries to persons <laughs> or death. <laughs> going out tonight? Me? No. Do you want some help with that? Gloria, you've been in here for the last half an hour and you're only just offering to lend a hand? Oh, shall I make her some coffee then? Huh. Do you remember how many sugars I took? Mum. Free in it? No. I don't take sugar in coffee. <laughs> so, if you try to sweeten me up, you'll have to bake me a cake. Oh, look, Mum. I was going to ask you a small favour. I promise I'll never ask you anything as long as I live. But will you ask Daddy if you'd be willing to let Alex do the exhibition in the shop? <laughs> I didn't get all that sight again. Oh, please don't tease, Mum. Will you ask him? It's important. You mean Alex is important? Well, yeah, he is. It feels right. There's a brain there. I can talk to Alex and I don't feel I have to explain myself every two seconds. And it's not an effort. He tells me to shut up. I tell him to get laughs. It's great. <laughs> and I presume he's good looking as well as intelligent. If Alex was sitting here and Denzel Washington walked in, I wouldn't even have noticed. <laughs> 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 well, he sounds really wonderful. How come we haven't met him yet? Mum, you know what Dad's like about my boyfriends. He never likes any of them. As soon as he gets introduced, he picks out their faults. And then by the end of the evening, he's put me right off him. <laughs> uh, maybe he's right. I mean, you can't blame him if you make bad choices. Alex is different. <laughs> anyway, what about him having his exhibition in the shop? Well, what's wrong with a proper gallery? Well, he's not that sort of... Look, I'll explain later, but will you ask Dad about our shoes in the shop? Yeah, I'll ask him. He'll say, no. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll ask him. Thanks, Mum. Don't thank me yet. Before I do you any favours, I want a few favours from you. And one is, you organise your own life before you go organising anyone else's. And two, you do not use that phone again until you pay off what you owe. Fair enough. I use a call box in the shop. Good. Well, seeing as the bathroom is vacant for once, I think I'll go upstairs and run a bath. Yeah, but you won't forget about that thing, though, will you, Mum? No! <laughs> it's me. 
Hello, it's me. Hey, did you ask? Yeah. Great. So it's all sorted. That was quick. Yeah, but... <laughs> I'll bring you back. Hmm? And you want me to do you a favour? You're a dark horse, aren't you? I never thought of you as being a patron of the arts, though, mate. Yes, well, it was up in the attic. Shirley was going on about brightening up the place a bit. I bought that in 1967, you know. <laughs> yeah, I can see that, mate. But I'm talking about this. Pick this up down a community centre this morning. The artist Alex Reynolds continues his tradition of exhibiting in real working environments. This time, host gallery is Desmond's Barbershop, Peckham. What? <laughs> Who's behind this? <laughs> Gloria, <laughs> come and have a word with Daddy. <laughs> oh, not now. What's your boyfriend doing advertising an art exhibition in my shop? Advertising? Yeah, there's a whole load of them down the community centre. Oh, it's a nifty bit of graphics, that. I mean, I don't know much about art, but... <laughs> you didn't ask Dad yet, did you? No, I haven't asked your father yet. I think you may be allowed one phone call. Yes. You can use it to summon that boy Reynolds to see me. Now! He may be good at putting designs on paper, but I want to know what designs he's got on my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but the idea of art, you see, has set up such a context of action within our culture and has taught us to interpret the images of art as records and indications of cultural and artistic intention. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've always felt that way about it, yeah? Well, I never thought of it like that. Ah, oh, but it's still a brush. Sometimes, Pogpai, you're such an ignoramus. Jess, <laughs> Jess, you'll never guess, mate. This is art. <laughs> Great. Everybody out except you. Oh, Dad, can't we talk this out peacefully, please? No. Gloria, I think it would be a good idea if we both went upstairs. Of course, sometimes I think this family is positively Dickensian. The only thing missing is Dad's mastiff and horsewhip. <laughs> I need to get you insured, Alex. I thought I told the three of you to come out. But it's going to rain. <laughs> <laughs> Not a drop. It's bright and sunny out there. Come out. Besides, the fresh air will do you good. Fresh air? In Peckham? <laughs> yeah, isn't that the stuff that comes in tins at the chemist? Oh, it's very good for the lungs, they say. For over 20 years I've been coming here and not once have you ever closed up this place early. Come out, and you too, Tony. No, 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 Des, I've got a client here any minute now. Well, tell her we got a new line in business. Alfresco weaves out. <laughs> oh, man. Boy, I'm sorry for you. <laughs> All right, Alex, I'll give you a bell next Thursday. Mm. Don't worry about it, Des. His bite's worse than his bark. Uh, Don't you mean that the other way round? Nah, but I'm sure you can handle him. <laughs> right, sit down. Father? A word, please. <laughs> sit down, please. My secretary handed me this this morning. Apparently, a number of them have been distributed around town, not to mention several posters in a local library. So, I presume this art exhibition is for real. Well... That being the case, can I just say this? I'm angry. You angry? Not <laughs> angry, father, but hurt. You never even thought of consulting me on any of this, either as your partner or your son. Remember me? Michael Ambrose, the one mother gave birth to in 1962. <laughs> An art exhibition. What do you know about art? The man who thought Van Gogh was a German wine on special offer at Tesco. <laughs> Father, you cannot run a barbershop and an art gallery. The two things just aren't compatible. Excuse me. Sit down, uh, please. <laughs> Remember me? Desmond Ambrose. I've been your father for close on 30 years. And though it was hell sometimes, I stuck it out through the wet nappies and the acne <laughs> Long enough for you to grow up to be a partner in this business. Now, 
I have not decided what I'm going to do about Mr. Reynolds here, but when I do, I'll give you a call, okay? <laughs> Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Hi. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> hi. Um, look, mustache. <laughs> Got a meeting at half past. What the? Hold on. Look, take this man with oh. you. <laughs> A bit. Well, at least you have a hat. Desmond, would it be possible for me to ask Shirley if she has an umbrella I could borrow? Of course not. We closed out. No. Oh, yes. <laughs> right. Place your bets here, gentlemen. It'll give me ten to one odds on the thumbs down verdict. The natives are getting restless. Very soon they'll be calling for blood. <laughs> Lucky I brought my donor card with me then. <laughs> Right, you. Look, Mr. Ambrose, I just want to apologise for all the trouble that I've caused you. Look, you know, I expected to greet Gloria's dad with an offer to buy a round and a handshake. <laughs> Look, I know it must have been a big shock to you to suddenly find out that this place was being touted as a, a venue for the arts against your wishes. But I really am sorry, Mr. Ambrose. I don't know what else to say, except that Gloria's not to blame. It was all my idea. I just convinced myself that you'd agree to it. You've been involved in the arts yourself. Gloria's talked a lot about your musical talents. She has? <laughs> yes, she has. Go on, Lee, what's happening? Right. No, no, they're still talking. No sign of any bloodshed, though. <laughs> could, could possibly see some form of a truce being made here. No sign of the other suspect has yet, Miss Gloria Ambrose. We think maybe she's been kept in custody until the trial's over. <laughs> oh, oh, you're not going to believe this. Try me. <laughs> yeah. You see? Yes, yes, of course, I see. You mean, although it remains intact, there's always some movement, some fluctuation. <laughs> yes, I see what you mean. Mr. Ambrose, don't take this the wrong way. Put my work on display in your shop. It's almost like a dream come true. I mean, I wasn't always going to be an artist. I wanted to be a football player. But when I was 13, I did this collage of Icarus. The man who flew too close to the sun. I did a painting of that for my junior school art exam back in Guyana. You did? Oh, yes. I've always <laughs> had a tremendous appreciation for the arts, be it painting, music, the theatre. <laughs> that is my point. I mean, galleries imprison art. Yes. They suffocate it. Yes. Not to mention ripping off the artist. Oh, yeah. We have to get art into the community. Yes, yes. Bring it back to the people. Yes. That's why I want to use your shop. <laughs> OK. OK. Thanks, Mr. Ambrose. Um, what do you think of this painting? I bought it back in 1967. <laughs> <laughs> you see, exhibiting art in galleries unintentionally imprisons and suffocates the work on show. Art should be for everybody. That's where we come in, Desmond's, bringing art to the people. Yes, fine. And how much are we charging them? Charging for what? Well, for use of the premises, for a start. You mean you didn't discuss money? The French Impressionist? <laughs> I think you're talking about money. What I'm talking about, Father, is money. <laughs> I found out quite a bit about our Mr. Reynolds. Interiors did a feature on him a few months ago. He's quite high profile in some of the trendier art circles. Things he does are amazing. Oh, yes, they are, aren't they? Yes. <laughs> One thing. The ceiling is completely covered with broken pieces of glass. And on the walls, there's these oddments from cars and bicycles, like rusting carcasses everywhere. It's amazing. What? He's going to do that to my shop? Our shop, Father. All right, let's go. <laughs> Thanks for all your help, Mrs. Ambrose. It's incredible, Glow. Incredible. Mm -mm. Well, if you're sure. Oh, I am. I am. Stop! 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 Leave me! <laughs> Don't touch another thing! This! This! 
<laughs> but nothing changed. When do you start? I don't. There's nothing I can do to improve it. It's all a living exhibition as it stands. Look. <laughs> I know that you come to mention it yet, Tony. Wait a minute. What about all these people who are going to be turning up because of your stupid posters? Uh, compulsory audience participation, Michael. They'll all be invited to be Desmond's clients. They will? They'll all be part of a unique cultural experience. You mean they'll have their hair cut? <laughs> <laughs> and they'll pay? Yep. I like it, I like it. And you'll pocket the proceeds. That's right. Look, I think it's about time we wrap this nonsense up. Come on, back to work, everyone. Oi, 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 listen, you cultural bimbo. <laughs> Alex isn't making any money from this, are you, Alex? Michael, I consider it a sin to exploit part of our national heritage. You would? Listen, Michael, you hear good. <laughs> Desmond's is a monument to black British culture. It is? It belongs to the people. It does? <laughs> so the extra money that comes in... Uh, it could go towards... New chairs. A new bench. A sofa. Oh, yes. Please, Desmond. Oh, no, no. <laughs> it would be fear to change a thing in this place. And as my friend Alex says, and as I've always known, this isn't just a barber shop, it's art! <laughs>
I'll need a deposit. 20 pounds, no checks. <laughs> Come on, Mac, I'll give you a lift, mate. Look, I need to stop off and pick up a few belongings. Walk by. I presume you don't have a garlic press. A what? <laughs> a garlic press? <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll give that flat shit 24 hours. They didn't take us, eh? Oh, that's all right. <laughs> I brought you some tea. I didn't want any. Well, I brought you some anyway. <laughs> and there was only one old used tea bag left. I hope you didn't throw it away. <laughs> well, I did. So there. <laughs> um, what are you having for dinner? Fish fingers. Is that the best you can do? No, but that's the best you're going to get. <laughs> um, maybe we should get a takeaway. Will they take you away too? <laughs> Who's that? I don't know. I haven't opened the door as yet. <laughs> it could be your sister. <laughs> Open could... this door. I know you are in there. You could be right. She has been known to do strange impersonations. <laughs> I will count to three. I'm zwei. Oh, what's next, Lou? <laughs> supplies, supplies. <laughs> Oh, look, we can't stop. We just pop by to give you these. Yeah, emergency rations to see you through the siege. Well, how very kind of you. You must have read my mind. Why, is it out in paperback, man? <laughs> Who's paying for all of this? It's from the house, Uncle P. You mean from the house? Well, yeah, we had a fridge raid. Yeah, Mum and Dad donated the veg and I sacrificed my yogurt. Are there any biscuits? That's a little fugitive, aren't you? <laughs> look, I'd better put these in the fridge before they go off. It's like a furnace in here, isn't it? Mm, must be all the friction, eh, Uncle P? Yeah. <laughs> well, uh... Have there been any sightings of my sister Florence? No sign of the enemy yet. <laughs> Mr Grant, why is it so warm in here? You're getting ready for global warming. Mm. <laughs> it's no wonder you can't afford to pay your bills. Really, you should try to think more economically. Why? <laughs> now that you're here, I don't have to think more economically. You can afford to pay any bill they care to send me. <laughs> Listen, if you need anything else, just give us a call, all right? Thanks for having us then, Mr Grant. It's all right, Louise. It was a pleasure. I'm sorry I couldn't offer you a cup of tea, but this man threw away my tea bag. <laughs> I was actually ready to have another one. You could have asked. I can see trouble brewing here. Mm. Come on. Matthew, don't squeeze the toothpaste in the middle. <laughs> I wish my telephone wasn't disconnected. Why? I would call that sister of yours and tell her that you're here. <laughs> Bye. If and when Florence puts in an appearance, you can deal with it. I'm no good at telling lies. Oh, I don't know, my sweet. You convinced that woman that she needed two bottles of herbal shampoo and what she really needed was a hair transplant. <laughs> so it should be a pushover. Well, if she comes here and starts making trouble, that's exactly what I'm going to do to her. What? Push her over. <laughs> Stop shopping me. <laughs> Is she here? Is she here? No. 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 So come in, you ungrateful student. <laughs> What should it be, gentlemen? Pistols or swords? <laughs> Will you please explain to your friend Paul Pye that uh -huh. it is just common courtesy to allow one's guests first use of the bathroom in the morning? And Shirley, will you please explain to your friend Matthew that hot water doesn't grow on trees? <laughs> That's the sort of nonsense I've had to listen to all night. You could have gone out. Candles go out, Paul Pye. Prisoners do not. <laughs> Math, quick. Your sister just pulled up in a cab. Shift. Beagle has landed. I must flee. Get your customer. Matthew, Matthew, over it, mate. Over it. No, no, no. Go upstairs. Upstairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Upstairs. 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 Oh, Florence. This is a surprise. Greetings, Shirley. And to you, Desmond. Oh, hello, Florence. Back so soon. Soon? It's been over a year, Desmond. Oh, yeah. It seems like only yesterday. <laughs> not a lot of activity for a Friday afternoon, Desmond. That's true, but then this is a barber shop, not a sports centre. Uh, can I get you anything? Tea, coffee? Some tea would be nice. Yeah. And a few biscuits. But not those nasty ones that look as if they've been used as a swatch for flies. <laughs> Gloria? Why me? I'll come with you. Check for flies. <laughs> no sugar for me, little girl. I'm sweet enough already, wouldn't you think? <laughs> now that you have the refreshments organised, 
I have to confess that this is not a social visit. I have come to fetch my brother Matthew to take him back home with me to the Gambia. What? You see, my father is feeling his age and he wishes for Matthew to come and help him run the family business. So, being a responsible and caring daughter, I felt it my duty to see to it that my father's wishes are granted. No sooner had he uttered the words than I hopped on a plane. And here I am. How nice. But the question is, where is my brother? I presume you know his whereabouts? Well, of course we do. He's gone on holiday. Gone on holiday? Where to? He didn't say exactly, but I think he may have gone... Uh, uh, on a cruise. To Portugal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, on a cruise. That place in Algarve. Mm. <laughs> well, he doesn't seem to have taken much with him. I have visited his flat. All his suitcases are still there. That's because he's gone on a survival course. A what? To Portugal? No, in the Outer Hebrides. But I thought you said Portugal. Yes, I did. He forgot. Portugal was cancelled? Yes, the travel agent overbooked, so they sent him on a survival course instead. <laughs> to the Outer Hebrides? Yeah. Yes. In yeah. Scotland? Yeah. 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 Hmm. A little out of character for someone so used to fine wines and table napkins and so entirely remote from the mysteries of haggis. Well, <laughs> yes. He has also forgotten to cancel his milk, which makes me very suspicious. You see, for all his shortcomings, my brother is a very orderly man. Still, not to worry, I am a very determined daughter. I'm sure I'll chuck him down the bedroom. <laughs> ah, Mr. Ambrose, Jr. Michael, isn't he? Mrs. McFarlane, nice to see you again. Um, how's your husband, Matthew, the, the other Matthew? Is he, um... He's on an important business trip in Dusseldorf, but he's fine, fine. Good, good. Well, it's been lovely talking to you. Can't stop. I'm just going for the books, actually. Father, where are they? Uh, upstairs. <laughs> At last! Has she been waiting for a bus? Get up, get up! <laughs> get up, get up! Thank you, Gloria. Yes, thank you. Pleasure. <laughs> this must be a West Indian costume. Chocolate biscuits with tea. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, we didn't have anything else. Well, if I knew you were coming, I'd... You would have baked a cake? <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly. Excuse me. Don't I know you? Who, me? Yes. I have an excellent memory for names. It's steak pie, isn't it? <laughs> pork with a P. Pork pie. Oh, yes. I knew it had something to do with dead animals. <laughs> Father, where are the books? I can't find them anywhere. Ah, oh, Michael. One moment, please. I don't suppose you have seen my brother, Matthew? Yes, he's just in the bathroom. He'll be no, down no. In the... <laughs> Matthew! Come down here at once! <laughs> Hello, Florence. What a pleasant surprise! <laughs> and survival haggis. Are you hiding from me? Don't you know your father wants you to come home and... Yes. <laughs> if you can bear to close that mouth of yours for just a few seconds, I have something to say. I'm sure you'll be delighted to know that I've decided to accept father's offer and I will be returning home for good. What? Uh -huh. <laughs> What can I say? Look, I didn't know anything about it. Nobody told me you were hiding in the bathroom. I was not hiding, Michael. I was lying low. Yes, but I'm <laughs> sorry to blow your cover, OK? Look, if there's anything I can do to help... Well, it's done now, so shall we get down to business? Yes. The matter of transferring the rents from your property to your foreign accounts in the Gambia. I've just got some forms for you to sign. Just... Yeah. Matthew, why can't you tell your folks that you don't want to return home to run the business? Sometimes it is better to go with the flow. Uh, flow, <laughs> meaning for it. Exactly. And one can hardly appeal to her emotional side. My sister, you have noticed, has all the sensitivity of a Sherman tank. <laughs> yes, but Matthew, she's not the one that wants you home. I mean, surely you can ring your father and say you have other commitments here. No. You see, in the Gambia... In the Gambia. Look, I know things are different there, Matthew, but you're using it as an excuse for some pretty weak-kneed, yellow-bellied behaviour. May I 
remind you, Michael, that if it went for you, I wouldn't be going home at all. Your tea, sir. And yours, Matthew. Everything all right, sir? I thought I heard raised voices. <laughs> yes, everything's fine, thank you, Mary. <laughs> a mug? Well, you're not leaving us. And I thought it a little unfair that Matthew should drink his last drop of English tea from a mug. You know, we're all going to miss you, Matthew, but I hope you'll be taking away some fun memories of us all. <laughs> well, some of us, at least. <laughs> you know, I know we've only met on a few occasions, but I feel we could have become very close well, friends. Well, that's enough, Mandy. I, I was only trying to say farewell. You mean you won't be coming to the shop this evening? No. Why? Is there something going on? Oh, my kind and thoughtful friends have organised a farewell party. Didn't Michael tell you? No, he didn't, Matthew. It slipped my mind. Well, <laughs> may I take this opportunity to extend a personal invitation to you, Mandy? <laughs> We'd love to come. <laughs> We're going to miss him, you know. Who? Your brother, he's sort of grown on us. Yes, I can imagine. It must be like the wart I had on my little finger. Can you see? Just there it was. Then one day, I gave it a rot, and poof, it just fell off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try it on my husband Matthew's bodyons next. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew. I don't suppose you'll give me a chance. <laughs> you'll be wanting to visit for holidays, I expect. Yeah, you bet. I always knew I had a soft spot for Matthew. And as this is a farewell, I'm going to give you two farewell kisses. Mm -hmm. Stingy, you can have four from me. Oh! <laughs> and Sean said to give you this. Oh, thank you. It's, um, Anthony, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's right. You're, uh, Michael's Mandy, aren't you? No, I, I'm not Michael's anything, actually. I mean, I work for him, but I'm not his. Are you anybody? I beg your pardon. Have <laughs> drink? Oh, don't mind if I do. <laughs> all right, all right. Listen, everybody. Uh, Lee, turn off the music. Oh. <laughs> um, ladies and gentlemen, we are gathered here to witness the end of what has been a long and arduous journey. A journey undertaken by our good friend Machu here through the hallowed halls of academia. Echo what? Dean, you know, Oxbridge and all that. Uh... Oh, Oxbridge, yeah, it's on a Piccadilly line, isn't it? <laughs> Quiet when your elders are speaking. Thank you, Florence. It's been 16 years since Matthew came into this shop to ask for the directions to the local library. And, um, Ever since then, he's been a regular visitor to this shop. He came, and he sat, and he sat. <laughs> Some people might say that his time here has been wasted, but I would dispute that. Time spent imparting knowledge and wisdom can never be wasted. And for us, getting to meet someone from the fatherland has been of immense value. Yes! Yeah. Now we can all say we know at least one old African saying. <laughs> <laughs> so, Matthew, my dear friend, uh, Michael, I would like you to accept this gift as a small token of our affection and admiration. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> there is an old African saying. <laughs> Like a it. word to the wise is sufficient, but for pork pies' benefit, I'll add a few more. <laughs> <laughs> but first of all, I'd like to give thanks to Desmond and Shirley for organizing yeah. this wonderful yeah. party. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this evening has shown me what good, kind, and generous friends I've made during my brief stay in the United Kingdom. And I've oh, resolved... come on, Matt. Shut up and open your prison room. <laughs> <laughs> I was forgetting. Um, we'd like you to look at it as a commemorative of many of the close oh. shaves you've had in our shop. <laughs> a very strange present. They do realise we have electricity in the Gambia, I suppose. <laughs> Thank you, Shirley and Desmond. Now, everybody, let's boogie! <laughs> I would like to say a few words oh. with regards to the sudden and untimely departure of my good friend, Matthew. It's all right, Paul Pye. We ain't gonna bury him, you know? <laughs> when I first met Matthew, I thought he was just a pompous, arrogant African student. But over the years, I've come to realize he is something else, a good friend. 
I mean, who else would sit next to me with his newspaper blocking my view and accuse me of reading his over his shoulder? <laughs> and who else would be quoting African proverbs in my ears at all hours? Filling the crossword when it's his turn to play the domino and squeeze the toothpaste in the middle like he did the other night. <laughs> but who else would sometimes? <laughs> Sorry, everybody. That's what. Uh, step this way, Matthew. Uh, we have another present for you from Pope Pie. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, Sat, here. It's only temporary until I can afford your full name. Oh, no! I like it left as it is, Pope Pie, really. I don't know what to say, except that. Oh, I'm... all right, save that till later, because you... <laughs> you got one more present to come, mate. <laughs> more? <laughs> yeah, well, we couldn't let you go without giving you a farewell song, could we? Oh, no, 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 no. Ah, give us a chance. I can much. sing. You're having a laugh, are not you? Go on, then, go on. Goodbye, Matthew. Goodbye oh! to you. Goodbye, oh! goodbye. Oh! 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 Yeah, well, all right. Well, maybe I can't sing, but here are three lovely young ladies who can. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome all the way from South Africa. Progress. <laughs> goodbye, dear friend. Farewell to you. We will miss you. We wish you well, wherever you go. May your life be blessed forever. Cause you look so lovely sitting there. We're so lucky to have you as a friend. Farewell to you. Kaweli Kulu. May the Lord bless you, dear Matthew. Goodbye, dear friend. May the Lord bless you, dear Matthew. Could have done so much of damage. But it wasn't his head, there's so much as the force with which Florence hurled him at it. Well, just because he tried to goose her? <sighs> Poor Matthew, eh? Fancy having a sister like that. Here you are, Popeye. I made you some tea. Well, thank you, Shirley. Oh. I wasn't thinking, you know, it's just automatic tea for two. Oh, mm. listen, Shirley, if there's a cup of that going, don't Help you. yourself. Oh. Hello! What do you mean you didn't have to go? Yes, I demand an explanation. <laughs> I'm not in the habit of throwing farewell parties of people who come back before they even gone. <laughs> I'm sure Matthew can explain better. If you just calm down, Desmond. Well, you see, I was waiting for Sister Florence, all packed and ready to go when the phone rang. It was her, Florence. <laughs> she had phoned the Gambia to tell my father that her mission had been accomplished and she was bringing me home. And apparently, my father said, what the devil for? And she said, to help you run the business as you requested, Dada. And he said, my son, Matthew, help run the business? Are you out of your head, you stupid woman? <laughs> I met your husband, my son-in-law, the other Matthew. What? So, you don't have to go after all? 
No! So we are stuck with you here again? It would seem so. Right. <laughs> what you doing, Paul Clay? I'm going to call that engraver and get a refund on this plaque. <laughs> Imagine me, a pensioner, spending money on this student who doesn't have the decency to go and stay gone. <laughs> Is he going to be like this for the next 16 years? Yes. <laughs> Welcome back, Matthew. Huh? <laughs> From the long one nights to the ocean breeze to the dump and to the rain of London City. We come from the sun to live in the cold. I miss me, rum, I want my coconut tree. Don't scratch my sofa. Till the party's over. Let's keep the music sweet. Wind up your waist and feel Don't the scratch my sofa. I don't believe this phone. That's the third call I've lost this morning. Second, sir. Mrs Johnson slammed the phone down on you. But well, this better be good, Mandy. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say it was exactly good. It's this memo from our no-nonsense, straight-talking manager, Mr McCree. <laughs> <sighs> These are difficult times. We are reviewing our situation in South London. We can all help. We have to cut back on office stationery. Sir? Sir, did you read the memo? Look, all McCree is saying is cut back on office stationery, paper clips, that sort of thing. Paper clips today, people tomorrow. Haven't you heard all the rumours in the canteen? I don't go in the canteen, Mandy. Well, that explains a lot. <laughs> well, in yesterday's tea break, I was told by Jean McCree's secretary that a little bird had told her that head office are looking to restructure branches, merge us with Camberwell and generally make cutbacks. You're not going to make me nervous, Mandy. Well, if I were you, I'd be petrified. Think about it. If they merge us with Camberwell, they're only going to need one assistant bank manager. Yes, but if they only need one assistant bank manager, they're bound to give the job to... <laughs> no, it's... Because he's been here longer than you, precisely, sir. Mandy, you're making me very nervous. I just want you to know, sir, I'm not going back to the typing pool. You realise how much my mortgage will be without the bank's subsidy? And as for working for anyone else, well, we've been through too much together. The repayments on a BM alone will be astronomical. And today of all days... Well, I'm not giving back my gold card, I can tell you. <laughs> Why today of all days? I've been with the bank five years today. <laughs> yes, I almost forgot. Head office sent me a memo on your five-year service pit. <laughs> I was going to give it to you over lunch. Lunch, sir? That's in view of the circumstances. <laughs> sir, you're meant to offer me your congratulations and then pin it on me. Yes, 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 congratulations. But what are we worrying about? We're two young, integral members of this bank with invaluable years of service behind us. They can't get rid of us just like that. Michael Amber's office. <gasps> yes, Jean, it's Jean. Jean. <laughs> Mr. McCree wants to see you in his office immediately. Oh! Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Shirley, let me give you a hand. Oh, my legs feel like they're gonna drop off. It's a nightmare out there. Anybody would think it's Saturday instead of a Monday morning. <sighs> it's too busy in here for it to be a Saturday. <laughs> Can I get you a cup of tea, my sweet? Oh, yes, that would be lovely, my darling. Oh, thank you, Pope. Eh? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Next time I go shopping. I'm gonna wear shin pads to protect my legs from the peck and push chair brigade. <laughs> you do realize why it's so busy outside, don't you? It's uh, half term. How would you know the difference? Your term begins and ends in here, loafing about the shop. <laughs> I'm sorry, Uncle Pope, but that's a reactionary and stereotypical remark, isn't it? That students spend all their time loafing about the shop. I mean, we're students, right? We're serious, intelligent members of society, fully aware that the future of the nation rests in the palm of our hands. Now, don't forget, the student of today is the leader of tomorrow. Yeah, man! <laughs> In Matthew's case, the student of today is the student of tomorrow. <laughs> Who is that stranger sprawled out in your chair? Hmm? He reminds me of a little boy I used to know. This is my son, Sean. A suitable name for a barber's son, do you think? <laughs> I read intelligence, innovation and leadership were being handed out. The Ambrose family was right there at the front of the queue. You must have been away that day, eh, Des? <laughs> Tony, when I want your resignation, I'll ask for it. Anyway, this is just the beginning. 
When I get out there, I'm gonna make my mark on this world. Well, I hope you clean up after yourself. <laughs> there ain't gonna be nothing to stop me, right? Because I got drive, initiative, charisma, modesty. Of course, you name it, I got it. You ain't seen nothing yet. That, my friends, is definitely an Ambrose. <laughs> it looks like a newspaper to me. <laughs> Sean, look. I bought you this T-shirt from the market. <laughs> Great, thanks, Mum. You don't like it? Well, it's not that I don't like it. It's just that you won't be seen dead wearing it. <laughs> oh, dear. There was a time I used to know your taste. You're growing up so fast. Still, if you don't like it, you don't like it. Sorry, Mum. Hello, thanks. What, no business? But it's so oh, hard. Damn. Damn. Will no one let me forget it? Well, Des, <laughs> maybe some of Don the old sandwich board and trot up and down the high street, mate. Ha. Well, maybe it's time you got out of my shop. Des, Des! I'm not trying to help, am I? Yeah, listen, Lee, if you really want to help, mate, take a seat over there and pay for a haircut, ha. yeah? No, it's too late. Fat Larry's already done the biz. <laughs> you got your haircut, you fucking fat Larry! Des, <laughs> it's half term. You're normally busier, and he was packed as it was. Yeah, well, what do you expect, Des? Fat Larry's got a full top stylist all doing the latest cuts, yeah? And how many you got? Me! I told you before, Des, we need another assistant. Especially in the halls, one to attract the kids. Someone young, someone innovative, street. Did someone call me? <laughs> so you actually know me better by my alias, Sean Scissorhands. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, Pops. Fat Larry's just kicking, but that's not to say that with my assistants we couldn't be kicking her and jamming her and slamming her. What has happened to the English language? <laughs> Sean, I've told you before, you just don't become a barber like that. Why not? You did. <laughs> Six years of experience. Ah, oh, Dad. I've done it at school. We're always shaving designs in each other's hair. Well, we had to stop, though, because kids started turning up with four-letter words on the back of their head. <laughs> right, so you want customers? Well, stand back and make way for Desmond's, the next generation. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> well, this is a turn-up for the books, isn't it? In charge of restructuring. <laughs> you know what this means, don't you, Mandy? Yes, it means you've got to recommend staff for redundancies. Oh, look, don't be so boring, Mandy. It means that McCree thinks highly of me. Well, that makes two of you, then, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, I suppose it does. Right, let's get sacking. Well, uh, cracking. Uh, this is the phone Mr Ambrose is having problems with. For some reason, his extension keeps getting cut off. I know, the stuff. Woman in the couch. Blonde hair, glasses, moustache. <laughs> Sophie, sir. That's the one. Hardly ever here. She can go. Sir, she's on maternity leave. That proves my point exactly. You don't catch me swanning off on maternity leave, do you? <laughs> got another one. Kid with spots. Young guy. He's got spots. Alistair the cashier? <laughs> but why, sir? He's got spots. <laughs> <laughs> sir, don't you think we should be a bit more methodical about this? I mean, we are talking about people's jobs here. Um, sorry. We, Mandy? Sorry, who's we? <laughs> Were we given the job of restructuring the branch? No, sir, you were. That's right, Mandy, I were. I mean, was. <laughs> Look, we wanted my skills, my judgment, my authority. Therefore, these redundancies are going to be based on my decisions. Have you got that, Mandy? Yes, sir. Good. Uh-uh. <laughs> name that tune. I'll name that tune in what? I know it. It's something to do with alcohol. Please give me a drink. No. Nope. This phone is not working. Nope. nope. Shall we give them a clue? No. Nope. It's a large rum and coke under the palm tree by Siebert Williams and the late night nope. drinkers. Nope. Well, what is it then? <laughs> I want scotch. <laughs> one bourbon. <laughs> and one, one beer. beer. Bye. It was Melbourne and the Aladdin chicken shocker. Right. You see, I was right. It's about drinking. <laughs> I used to cut hair to this shoe. You had a parting in your hair. <laughs> you had hair to part. <laughs> now, we played this to death when we first opened the shop in 1963. 1963. In 1963, I was still a student. A mere child in the Gambia pork pie. I knew all the words to this song. You had Amos Milburn and the chicken shackers in the Gambia? Yes. No, they used to be on Caribbean Club on BBC World Service. We listen to the World Service all the time. Ta da da da, ta da da da. You can do the World Service by not pretending that you can sing. <laughs> Mrs. 
Mrs. Ambrose like to have this dance? I don't mind if I do. But if my husband comes through that door, you'll have to hide. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, ain't it sweet? Yeah, pork pie, I bet you're a bit of a nifty move in your day, yeah? Oh, you mean my day? My day is not over yet. Watch this. <laughs> you doing? I'm dancing. Now, that's not dancing. This is dancing. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. I love it. I absolutely adore it. Respect to the older generation. And over here on the dance floor, we have Sister Shaw and Daddy D giving enough leg twirl. Respect to that. <laughs> and right here, giving it a textbook step, we have Matthew. <laughs> Even though I've never read a textbook like it, Spotlight, we have pork pie who obviously needs to spend a penny or two. <laughs> Naff leg work, naff respect, naff said. Uh, respect. Yo, 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 what's for this old timer's record, man? Woo! Yeah. Oh. Oh. Hey. Ah. Ah. We used to play this to attract customers in the 60s. Uh, customers in the 60s or in their 60s? <laughs> Sometimes I think this place is like a time capsule. Look, if you keep up with us, right, we'll soon have this place kicking a tone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. F A B brains. Jeez. <laughs> right. Now let's get this show on the road. As from this moment, we're not just a barbers, we're a hairdressers. Now I'm here, and I'm dressed. Ah! Yeah! <laughs> the sunglasses. <laughs> all right, all right. Real music. Real music. <laughs> oh, not so loud. This will get the bros in, mum. Well, how you know we're gonna get any bros in? Because I've put the word out. Everyone under 18, half price at Desmond's for the rest of the week. Half price? Boy, are you trying to ruin me? Listen, Dad, we get loads of customers at half price, but we charge them a pound extra for every line we put in their head. Run those options past me, OK? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Pops, I think you know where I'm coming from. All right. Yo, sure. Look, Pops, customers! <laughs> Hello? 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 Mandy! Well, this phone still isn't working. Well, perhaps you should add it to your hit list, sir. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? It means the word is out. People are nervous wrecks. The canteen is a hotbed of rumours. You think you could try that with a few more metaphors this time, Andy? <laughs> I mean, how does anybody know what I'm thinking? I was only given the job a few hours ago. Well, all I can say is tongues are wagging. Really? And whose tongue in particular, Mandy? <laughs> there comes a time when a boss-secretary relationship can be sorely tried. And if a humble secretary thinks that her far-from-humble boss is behaving like a jumped-up, pig-headed, ignorant, reptilian apology for a man, I believe you should say so, sir. <laughs> Are you daring to challenge my authority, Mandy? Let me see. How can I put this? Yes! <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Good. You're fired! African hats here, African hats, three pound a hat, only three pound a hat. When Sean said he was going to drag this place into the new generation, I didn't realise it meant dragging Lee and his dodgy goods in here as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit noisy in here, Celeste, but hang on, I got the answer. <laughs> Better? There you go, down me, old mate. I ain't never been asked to cut a shape like that before, but if I say so myself, that is pretty dread. <laughs> you're learning, Tone, you're learning. Now, Darren, what do you need to go with a Chris half-price haircut and even Chris a half-price African hat? Now, these are real African, mate. <laughs> real ish, kind of. <laughs> Sean, what's this poor boy's mother gonna say when he goes home from death when his hair looking like this? I know what she'll say this. She'll probably say, oh, I see they've taken the old boy after haircuts now <laughs> then. <laughs> How much commission you pay me on these hats? Uh, uh, ten percent, this. Good, good. <laughs> Get your African hats here. Only three pound thirty a hat. <laughs> right, who's next? Matthew, you, you ever seen any hair cut like that? That boy's head looked like it was in an accident. <laughs> uh, I don't know, Popeye. In certain parts of Africa, warriors shave their heads in such a way as to intimidate the enemy. And in Peckham, they do it to intimidate their parents. <laughs> 
Sean, man. I didn't know Desmond's playing such wicked music. Yeah, well, now you all know what's up, yes. man. Yes. Hey, what's up, man? Kicking. Oh. <laughs> Sean, turn the music down. You're driving the customers away. Oh, shame. Oh, shame. shame. Oh, no. <laughs> it's all right, Sean. It's all right. Mom, it's not driving the customers away, it's bringing them in. Be crank up the volume, man. All right. Yeah! before Lee. What's that squeak? Dog drums need oiling. <laughs> You're going to get arthritis in your old age. Is that what you got, then? <laughs> you ought to have a book in your hands. But what's the use of books at your age? I know <laughs> one use. For free. Thank you. Let me that book, please. There's my shirt. I'm sorry, but I can no longer take any more of this. Me too, Desmond. You're driving your oldest customers out of the shop. Why don't you two go upstairs and help yourself to tea? Ah, uh, Shirley, this is the sweetest sound I've heard all day. Popeye, let us withdraw and raise ourselves above this pandemonium. <laughs> In fact, Dad and Mum, why don't you go upstairs as well? I mean, me and Tone have got things under control down here. Hey, Tone. Yeah, go on, Des. Go on upstairs. Put your feet up. Don't worry. Sure, you two. We can look after things well, down I'm here. Finish well, with my customer. You ever had a feeling of being pushed out to your own shop? <laughs> what are you doing here? Oh, it's Michael, isn't it? He's had an accident. Lee, turn the music down. No, he's fine, Mrs. Ambrose. Although he carries on the way he is, he may well meet with an accident. No offence, but he's, he's the most unprincipled, arrogant, condescending smug. Yes, yes, that song's like Michael. <laughs> <laughs> well, usually I take things at my stride, but this time, well, he's been given the job of restructuring the branch. That's management talk for giving people the chop. Yeah, that's the job he'd enjoy. Well, he's like a man possessed. He fires people left, right and centre, and he started with me. Oh, oh, is he? And he's got it in for one poor kid because he's got spots. Says it'll frighten the customers away. Michael's saying this? Yes, he's out of control. Someone's got to do something, that's why in desperation... I don't think there's anything we can do, Mandy. I know Ambrose men. Once they're on their high horse, there's no getting them off until they meet a very low brown. Well, only up to a certain age, surely, surely. <laughs> well, it was worth a try. At least I got it off my chest. Well, that marker doesn't know how lucky he is. Listen, Mandy, if you ever need... Sean! Sure. Sure. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, anyway. If only most parents were as sensible as you. Well, if we were like most sensible parents, we wouldn't have had Michael. <laughs> Mandy, can I give you a lift anywhere? Uh, no, thanks, Lee. I haven't got far to go. You know, there is one way you could do with Michael, didn't you? Maybe I will take that lift. You know, you were saying about this geezer now, the one with the spots. Yes. Yeah, well, let me tell you about a boy we used to call Marshes. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that sound? Yes, that used to be us. Ah, oh, we've had some good times in that shop. You know my favourite memory of the shop? The heat wave of 76. No, that was a year. But you know the best thing about that year? The English learning about real heat for the first time. <laughs> Everybody running around half naked. Yeah, even the sweat was sweating. <laughs> <laughs> the shop door stood wide open. We'd hired one of those big fans, and the whole of Peckham was in that shop glued to the television, watching the cricket! cricket. <laughs> England versus the West Indies. <laughs> the Saturday of the fifth test at the Oval. Uh, I enjoyed every moment of it, even though I didn't have a clue what on earth was going on. <laughs> <laughs> that was the year I made my Michael Holding rum punch, remember? Mm -hmm. The one that knocked everybody for six. <laughs> and surely made the salt fish fritters. Yum on! <laughs> and the television was on in the corner with the sound down. And we were listening to John Harlock painting pictures on his Radio 3 commentary. <laughs> and Greg setters himself at the crease. Lloyd calls another slip in close. Michael Holding starts his long run up to the expectant cheers of the crowd. Holding, majestically striding in off his 22 paces in perfect balance and impeccable rhythm, he bowls. He's bolded! Oh, my goodness! The crowd is gone for seven. And Greg has gone for twelve. And England done for boy! Yes, those were the days. Well, 
Well, I don't suppose you could stay at the crease all that long. <laughs> We've had a good innings. The shadows are lengthening on the grass. Maybe it's time we declared. <laughs> <laughs> Me, remember? <laughs> yes, yeah, I suppose I did, really. But surely this won't affect our relationship. Oh, no, sir. I wish all my relationships were based on the sack. <laughs> right, right. Uh, you still going ahead with your list? Maddie, it's a job that has to be done. Including Alistair with the spots? Top of the hit list. Don't you mean zit list, sir? <laughs> <laughs> Leave the jokes to me, please, Mandy. Does the nickname Marshes mean anything to you, sir? <laughs> what? Oh, it's nothing. It's just a little story I heard today about a 15-year-old boy who loved cricket but didn't get picked for the team. A tall, gangly lad, size 12 feet and shoulders that made him look like a walking coat hanger. All the boys called him Marshes. Do you remember why, sir? I don't think we have time for this. Oh, I think we do. <laughs> they called him Marshes because of his... Acne. Yes, acne marshes. <laughs> a boy who thought everybody hated him because of his spots. Listen, man. You convinced yourself that you weren't picked for the team because of your face. Michael Ambrose, were you or were you not good enough to play in that team? I was. I was. <laughs> and is Alistair being dropped from the bank's team because of his ability or his spots? <laughs> Mandy, I've been thinking. Um... Would you like to help me with my list of recommendations? Does that mean I get my job back, sir? Yes. Another five years, sir. Let's hope so. <laughs> oh, by the way, congratulations. Pin it on me, sir! <laughs> <laughs> wow, what a day! Now, was I good today or was I good today? Yeah, were well, we good today, yeah? Do you see what happens if you find your market, put the word out? Get the right blend of atmosphere? Yeah, yeah, you end up knackered. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. I ain't seen cues in this shop since the day Lee was flogging those mobile phones that turned out to be pencil cases. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, do you remember that day, Des? Um, Sean, you wanted to help you with the sweeping up? Hey, yeah, great, Pops. Now, Tone, tomorrow... And, uh, when I finish the sweeping up, what do you want me to do? <laughs> Dump those dirty towels upstairs, get fresh ones. Now, Tone, tomorrow... T -t Tomorrow's another day, mate, yeah? And if I sit around here listening to your plans for world domination, tomorrow will be today. So listen, pal, I'll check you later. Touch. All right, peace out, man. All right. All right, this. Bye bye, John. Oh, yeah. ah. What's the matter, Pops? Oh, nothing. You did good today, son. You said you'd get this place kicking, and you did. If I ever want to sweep her up, well, you know where to come. <laughs> <laughs> Pops, the shop may be kicking, but that doesn't mean I'm going to be kicking you out. It don't? No. I, well, I did have a great time today, but this is your gig, not mine. I mean, the name above the shop says it all. It does? Yeah. Anyway, whatever I decide to do with my life, I'm not going to be taking your curtain calls. I mean, you and Mum, you've taught me that I can go for anything I want out there. It's just that, well, whatever I go for, I just want you guys to be proud of me, like I'm proud of you. Well, I am proud of you, son. <laughs> just promise me one thing. Name it. Well, every now and then you'd come in from out there and have your hair cut in here, um, short back and sides. That's what you do best, Pops. Touch. Touch. Oh. From the long one nights with an ocean breeze to the damp and to the rain of London City. We come from the sun to live in the cold. I miss me, Ram, I want my coconut. Desmond. Desmond, you all right? No, no, leave me. <laughs> no. 
Desmond. No. Desmond, wake up. It's only a dream. Uh, Desmond, wake... What is it? Ah! <laughs> a bad dream? Yes. Who was it about? Michael. He was getting married. And as we went up the aisle to take our seats, Michael turned around and he winked at me. <laughs> that was a bad dream? Yes, but that was only part of it. Then the bride turned around and she was Michael. <laughs> Then the picker turned around and he was Michael and screamed. <laughs> then the whole congregation turned around and they were all Michael. <laughs> then you woke me up and you were Michael too. <laughs> it was horrible, horrible. Ah, who is it, Michael? <laughs> Michael doesn't live here anymore. Come in. <laughs> Morning. Ah, oh, Gloria. That's nice. Hmm. What you doing up so early? What's with the tea? You know, what time did you get in last night? Oh, don't tell me you haven't been to bed yet. Ah, she didn't go out last night, Desmond. So what's this in need of? Nothing. Look, if sir doesn't want the room service, I can always take it back, you know. Oh, no, 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 no. Hmm, <laughs> just couldn't sleep well, so I thought I'd bring you early morning tea. It doesn't have to be Father's Day, you know. Mm. Isn't our daughter wonderful? Isn't she lovely, Shirley? It's too early for the small dad. Do you know why she's so beautiful, Shirley? Because I look like Mum. No, because you don't look like Michael. <laughs> Why is it that every single member of this family dislikes Michael? Well, maybe it's because Michael dislikes every single member of this family. <laughs> you know what you're dreaming about him? Hmm? It's anxiety. Hmm. It's funny. We've always been worried about Michael, even now. Well, how come you never felt about me and Sean in the same way? Oh, but we have. Uh, well, no, but Michael is different. No, he's not. He's just... different. <laughs> Why? Well, he's nearly 30. No steady girlfriend. No promotion. No grandchildren. <laughs> Daddy's no good at that sort of thing. Uh. You don't think he's gay, do you? <laughs> He'd be no good at that either, would he? What have happened to Patricia? Oh, you mean the doctor? Yeah, she was nice. Oh, she was beautiful. She was intelligent. Yeah, she dumped him. <laughs> Derek. Sorry, I'm late, darling. Cardiac en route. But uh, you'll survive. Which is more than I can say for our relationship. <laughs> what? Look, we've been seeing each other for three months, during which we've been out three times. We've been to bed twice. The first time we both fell asleep, the second time your bleep went Yeah, well, so did yours. Uh, honey, listen, I think the lesson to be learned for next time There won't that... be a next time. Well, let's, uh, let's talk about it, shall we? What's brought this on? Don't patronise me. Patricia, I'm not. I'm not. But look, we're doctors, yeah. you work long hours, and you knew that coming into this relationship. I know. And so, so what are you saying, then? I'm saying, Derek, that I don't want to have a relationship with a doctor anymore. Fine. So who do you want to have a relationship Michael. Why not? Well, I thought you said he was a dork. <laughs> yes, I know. And he's boring. Yes, I know. And, and he couldn't excite a nymphomaniac on a blind date? I didn't <laughs> say that. Oh, no, but you implied it. Well, at least he's steady and reliable and there when I want him. Right, so this all boils down to sex, does it? No, it doesn't. No, so what is it, then? <laughs> That's what it is. We don't even have time for an argument, let alone a relationship. <laughs> Later, yes? Look, later's going to be too late, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Amber's office. Dr. Robeson. Patricia. No, I'm afraid he's in a board meeting at the moment. Uh, can I take a message? Just a moment, I'll get a pen and some paper. Tell him it's Dr. Patricia Robeson here. <laughs> she can be assertive sometimes, can't she? Bossy, sir. I'll speak to her. Are you sure? Yes, yes. Oh, look! Michael's just walked in. <laughs> Would you like a word? Hello? Hello, Michael. I'd love to see you. Would you? I'm just across the road. Can we have an early lunch? Uh, well, I'm just in the middle of... Uh... I'll take that as a yes. I'll see you at 12, at the Italian. <laughs> I'm meeting her for lunch. <laughs> Keep calm, sir. Isn't she 
you going out with that extremely handsome doctor called Derek? <laughs> yes, she is. Yes, you're quite right, Mandy. One must remain calm. One must remain in control. Yes, one must also remember that she ditched you. <laughs> yes. And one must also remember that you called her a cow, sir. Did I? Well, if you didn't say, you should have. Yes. <laughs> yes, Mandy, you're right. Mandy? Yes, sir? I'm out to lunch. <laughs> really, sir? <laughs> yeah, I need a horse. Good afternoon, everyone. Ah, oh, Matthew, good afternoon. Now, what was your lecture today? It's about love. Shakespeare wrote, love is not love which alters when it alteration finds, discuss. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> the thing about love is... Yeah, it keeps you young. It adds magic to your life. It can get you into serious trouble. <laughs> Are you talking about where your wife catch you with hyacinth green? No, man. <laughs> Is love I'm talking about, not lust. Oh, poor boy. I didn't know you knew the difference. Yeah, man. She was 13. Her name was Delcie Bradshaw. Her mother used to run the bread shot by the bottom of Titchfield Hill. That's right. <laughs> one hot, sunny day, I picked her this lovely bunch of flowers and she gave me a kiss right here. Oh, that doesn't sound like uh, serious trouble to me. And what I didn't tell them is that I picked the flowers from Miss Burgess's garden. <laughs> she see me, she beat me. She tell my father he beat me, and he tell Belsie's mother she beat me too. <laughs> that is serious trouble. Surely, surely, surely. Talking about serious trouble. <laughs> Beverly, you're a bit early for your appointment. You've been talking about me? My head buzzing and my ears ringing. <laughs> Surely I didn't sleep a wink last night. I just dreaming and dreaming. There was this fish caught in a net and it had on a black tie. Oh, dressed for dinner, was it? <laughs> yes, man. Don't laugh. The fish look at me as if to say, help! And as I reach out to save it, I fell straight into the water, so I know it was something to do with Michael. <laughs> <laughs> How on earth did you arrive at that conclusion? I don't ask. I had a feeling. Oh, here we, we go, go again. again. <laughs> Shirley, you worried about Michael, aren't you? Well, yes. Desmond had this dream. Shirley? You had a dream, too? <laughs> Shirley and Desmond Ambrose, something strange is gonna happen to your firstborn. The spirits never lie. Oh, Lord. <laughs> that was wonderful, Raga. Mmm. <laughs> Patricia? I do believe you're embarrassed. But there are people around. There usually are in restaurants. Is Michael worried about his image? Frightened that one of your customers might see us kissing? Of course not. Well, come over here and sit next to me. Otherwise, I'll climb over the table and sit next to you. You wouldn't dare. Yeah. <laughs> 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 That's better. Yes, much better. <laughs> Michael? Yes? Let's make babies. <laughs> well, when do you want to make them? Now. Now? Yes, right now, in this restaurant. Shut Patricia. <laughs> oh, Michael, we have so many things in common. We like the same music. Yes, we do. We enjoy the same food. Yes. We share the same sense of humour. <laughs> do we? We have to. You don't have one. <laughs> Michael, how long have we known each other? Um, about two years. No, three. Do you remember our first date? We ended up having a snowball fight outside my halls of residence. You got so soaked that you had to drive home wearing one of my white coats. Well, I always fancied myself as a doctor. And I always fancied you just as you were. But you got so staid. You changed. You forgot to let yourself go. And you were afraid to show how much you really cared for me. Michael, let's have snowball fights again. I mean, let's be reckless. Throw off your suit 
and run naked with me along the beach. Yes. Let the sea caress our bodies. <laughs> yes, yes. Let's get mad, passionate love. No, I like the sound of that. Let's get married. <laughs> So, in conclusion, we will gladly loan you the sum of £8,000 and we'll discuss your £10,000 overdraft at your earliest convenience. Yours sincerely, etc., etc. Are you all right, sir? Mandy, what do you think about marriage? Marriage? Oh, depends who too, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, me, of course. <laughs> sir! What is a girl supposed to say? Well, say something, otherwise we'll be here all day. <laughs> yes! I'm an old-fashioned girl, sir. I believe in the romance of marriage, the bonding of one woman and one man, and loyalty. You know I'm loyal, don't you, sir? Miss Mandy, you're very loyal. Thank you, sir. Of course, there is much you don't know about me since we work so intimately together. And what one doesn't know, one will have a lifetime to discover. Discovery is the joy of marriage. Discovery, loyalty and bonding. The bonding of two people, both mentally and physically. That's what I think about marriage, sir. I'm glad I asked. <laughs> and um, when did you intend to name the day, Michael? There's no rush. No, no, no. There's all the time in the world. And having children can wait, too. Children? Oh, <laughs> I think you would make a wonderful father. Strong and authoritative, yet gentle and caring. And they would be so beautiful. Yes, they would. <laughs> Patricia said exactly the same thing. <laughs> Patricia? Yes? You're going to marry Patricia? Well, we talked about it, but nothing definite has been decided. <laughs> Shirley, you perform miracles to my hair. Well, she should have done it sticking her all day. <laughs> Desmond's Coiffures. If your hair needs quaffing, at Desmond's you laughing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's you. Shirley, it's for you. Yeah, who is it? Don't tell me, it's my godson. All right, I won't tell you. <laughs> Hello? Michael! I told you, his vibes reached right down through the phone and grabbed me. <laughs> How just where did he grab you, Beverly? Don't encourage your poop, baby. <laughs> I think it's Desmond who would like to grab her and throw her out of the shop. <laughs> Don't tell me you can't make it. Listen to me, Michael. You just get your backside over here for dinner tonight. <laughs> There's nothing so important that you have to cancel your mother. Oh, Patricia! He wants to bring Patricia. Patricia? Patricia! Patricia! What's wrong with you, woman? I have a feeling about Patricia. Oh, Lord. <laughs> he wants to bring Patricia. What do you think that means? It means he wants to bring Patricia. <laughs> Ten marks for reduction, Popeye. I'll tell you what it means. It means trouble. It means somebody lo loves him after all. I suggested you go home and consult with your spirits, Beverly, and ask them if you went wrong. Or perhaps you had a, a few spirits over the top. <laughs> don't mock Desmond. But, Beverly, you don't think this is fate? I mean, first Desmond dreams about Michael getting married, and then now Michael is bringing Patricia over to dinner. You don't think they might be... Shirley, well, you know. they're only coming to dinner. Yes, I know, pork pie, but you never can tell. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but Patricia is not the chosen one. It is written. Who wrote it? <laughs> the spirits. Oh, God. Well, back home in Africa, anyone who prophesies doom is regarded as a witch. Who are you calling a witch? Well, your suggestion, will. I can't help it if the spirits talk to me. I don't ask them to. It's a gift. Is a gift I would send back. Mock as you may, Desmond, but there will be no union between the doctor and my godson. <laughs> <laughs> Mock as you may, Desmond. 
Oh, Mandy, what's this all about? You don't know? Ah, I see the game you're playing. You do? Yes, it's called Play With Mandy. Play with her emotions. You've led me on, haven't you, Michael? <laughs> Everything you've ever said to me in this office has always been sexually loaded. It has? Yeah, you see that again. I've seen the way you undress me with your eyes, the way you stand close to me when you're dictating. You've used me like an executive toy. Mandy. <laughs> Don't touch me! You've been itching to get your hands on me, haven't you? No! Yeah. Oh! But that's part of your game. And the game's up, Michael Ambrose, because I'm going to sue you for sexual harassment. What? Look, Mandy, pull yourself together. <laughs> yes, you're right. Why am I behaving like this? Why has an intelligent, sophisticated woman like myself been reduced to a snivelling little idiot over someone as irrelevant as you? <laughs> Listen, Shut Mandy. up! Can't you <laughs> rationalise my feelings? <laughs> I mean, this is clichéd stuff. Boss falls for secretary. <laughs> but I haven't Yes, you have. And that's one thing I have no intention of being is a cliché. <sighs> Good evening, Patricia. Hello, Mandy. <laughs> Patricia, oh, wonderful to see you. Oh, <laughs> Michael. <laughs> Michael Mandy's here. Oh. I'm not embarrassed. Doesn't embarrass me at all. Please carry on. <laughs> well, I mean, will I pass? You look wonderful, darling. Thank you. I do say love is blind. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations on your imminent marriage. Imminent? <laughs> Has he been jumping the gun? You mean you're not engaged? Well, if we're not engaged, we're definitely busy. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Uh, well, look, better get back to the shop. Uh, I've got to do father's books before supper time. Uh, so, uh, see you tomorrow, Mandy? But of course, sir. Right, well, come on, Ryan. Let's get this dinner over with so we can go home for our own party. <laughs> Michael Ambrose's office? Dr. Robeson? No, she's just left with Mr. Ambrose. Well, I'm sorry, I'm not allowed to give away home addresses, but can I say who called? Look, as you say, it's urgent. They've gone to Desmond's Barbershop in Peckham. <laughs> You're welcome. Bye-bye. Derek. <laughs> Remember, no mention of the word marriage. But you've already mentioned it. <laughs> well, you know exactly what I mean. What I would like to... And as for you two, you can stay long enough to say hello, say goodbye, and go. Why, she's a good-looking woman, that Patricia. She can examine me any time. <laughs> so far, she's a doctor of medicine, not archaeology. <laughs> no. Patricia has always found me far more stimulating. <laughs> but you, that's my future daughter-in-law you're talking about. Oi, Mummy, don't think she's pregnant, do you? That is exactly the kind of thing I do not want to hear this evening. All right, Shirley, we'll be on our best behavior. Then reach yet? Uh, Beverly, get out. <laughs> don't worry, I only come back for Cuthbert's red mullet. I'll leave it in the fridge. And to warn Michael. Don't start that again. I can see in the future. How strange, so can I. You can make predictions? Oh, yes. I predict Beverly will leave this shop with a little help from my foot. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Patricia. What a pleasant surprise. Don't sound so surprised, Mother. You knew she was coming. Yes, well, still nice to see her. Uh, may I? Oh, oh yes. welcome <laughs> back, Patricia. <laughs> Father, please. I would like to welcome the future Mrs. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, sit down and shut up. <laughs> Hello, Patricia. Remember me? I'm Beverly, Michael's godmother. <laughs> yes, well, how could I forget you? How's the back? Oh, <laughs> still playing me up. Uh -huh. And the arthritis, still gnawing at my bones. And the indigestion, <laughs> don't mention the gas. Sometimes I feel so bloated, I feel as if I'm going to burst. <laughs> we mustn't grumble, must we? Well, it's never stopped her before. <laughs> Hi, Patricia. It's all right. Beverly's not staying long. Well, it's a pity none of you can stay for dinner. I can stay. <laughs> but, Papa, we can also go. Bye bye. Oh, bye. bye. oh yes. <laughs> Derek. Patricia. Derek. Yes. Michael. Oh, Desmond. Uh, <laughs> Gloria. Papa. Matthew. <clears throat> 
and Beverly. Now that we've all got to know each other, will somebody tell me who Derek is? Patricia, how could you? Derek, please don't create a no, scene. After all the things you said about him, how can you go back to this dork, Michael? Dork! That's him. <laughs> could we just step outside and discuss this in an adult so, manner? What? Listen, I don't want to be adult about this. I'm too emotional to be objective. Listen, I do not care who hears what I have to say to you. Derek, can you please just keep your voice down? Uh, excuse me, I think I've had enough of this. With respect, um, Michael? <laughs> Will you butt out? Yeah? I mean, this is between Patricia and me. It's got absolutely nothing to do with you. Well, actually, I think it's got a lot to do with me. God and Michael. <laughs> <laughs> it would never work between us. I mean, we tried. <sighs> it just wasn't to be. No, you tried with Michael, but you got bored. You never gave our relationship a chance. Look, I know we've only been out together three times, OK? But I didn't realise until today just how much I need you. Look, I don't even know what I'm doing here. But I had to let you know how much you mean to me, huh? Oh, come on. Let's just, uh, try and make time, yet. Yeah? <laughs> Please, Patricia. Give me one more chance. I love you. <laughs> Don't you Shut up, Beverly. Well, you, uh, you know where to find me. Better still. Bleep. <laughs> Um, if I were him, I'd like to think he'd give me another chance, too. Oh, Michael. I'm sorry. So am I. I'm, I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> Listen, um... If it doesn't work out between the two of you, we know where to find me. Or better still, ring me on my mobile. <laughs> oh, my God. Look, I never thought I'd ever say this or do this, but, well, you're all right. Well, he's more than that. He's an Ambrose. <laughs> I told you, the spirits never lie. <laughs>